Hi all, welcome to today's uh, leadership lessons. I'm so glad that you've managed to join. Let's dive straight into prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We come to you today and we hear what you have to say in your word about your great leaders, Lord. Help us uh, understand what the context is as well as the message and also how we can apply it in our daily lives. So we give you all the praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay, it's quite an intense one, so let's have a look at it. This is taken from uh, the book of Esther. And after Haman's conspiracy against the Jews, uh, where you can read that in chapter 3, and it also goes into the satraps, the governors and the officials, it moves into chapter 4 where Esther agrees to help the Jews. So let's take it from verse 1. When Mordecai, when Mordecai learnt all that had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloths and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as front of the king's gate, for no, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews, with the fasting, weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther, Esther's maid and Enoch came and told her, and the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and take his sackcloth away from him. But he would not accept them. Then Esther called uh, Hashach, one of the king's Enochs, whom he had appointed to attend to her. And she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. So Sachach went out into Mordecai in the city uh, square where he was in front of the king's gates. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for the destruction which was given at Sushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go into the king to make supplication to him and plead before him for her, her people. So Hashach returned to and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hashach and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the kings and servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, hears but one law, put all to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, and that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king's these thirty days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think that your heart that you will escape the king in the king's palace any more than the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, so I will give so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. Fascinating, isn't it? It's really an account of a great leadership, skills, ability, risk. Let's have a look at a kingdom dynamics. It's rising to meet your destiny, and this is found through Esther's the biblical woman. Esther was a Jewish orphan, a virtually non-entity, non raised by her cousin, Mordecai, who with no particular promise. But the account con uh, contained in the book unfolds the way that God opens up destiny to any person who will keep his priorities. Even if the presence of recognition, success, wealth and luxury, an environment that many covet, uh, but which has so often proven destructive to sp uh, spiritual commitment, Esther retained her sense of perspective and integrity. Esther's Hebrew name was Hadasha, which means myrtle, referring to the well-known and beautiful evergreen shrub. She reflects the myrtle in her courage and obedience, with clearly, uh, which clearly did not wither, even when she faced a death. In Persian, Esther means star. Again, Esther's beauty, grace and character shone bright and unwavering against the darkness threatening the Jewish people. Note, Esther's response to Mordecai's call to recognize God's providence in her placement. She believed God, not her beauty, had put her in the, on the throne. 
Her respect for the power of prayer and fasting, she recognized the reality of the spiritual realm and the Holy Spirit's resources. Her unwavering will to lay down her own life for others and her practical good sense and patience in pursuing her enterprise. Let's have a look quickly at Kingdom Dynamics, which is women uh, courage under pressure. Women in God's design. Through the instruction of Mordecai, Esther realized that her life had far greater purpose than merely maintaining her own immediate comfort and status quo. Mordecai's words pierced her heart, and at great, great risk, she committed herself to follow his advice. Esther's heart was turned from her own self-interest to the plans and purposes of, of God. Ultimately, not only did the king receive her, but he offered her coolership with himself and later awarded her a signet ring, symbolizing a new level of authority in her life. Here, her courage resulted in a great deliverance of God's people. Truly effective women are those who are turned from their own short-sighted agenda to God's eternal purposes. Need I say more? I don't think so. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We've, we've read it uh, verbatim, and we give you all the glory and praise for any fruit that comes from it. So, Lord, not only the women that are designed for your pleasure and for your glory, I also release this across both men and women. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will use them powerfully to advance your kingdom and to give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I hope that's been a great nugget for you during this leadership lesson and I so look forward to spending time with you again. Sending you love. Take care.